The following is a fan-based discussion. All materials discussed are property of Toei Inc., Bandai, Hasbro, Saban Entertainment, and Subaraya Productions. Hi everybody, welcome back to Toku Talk. Hi everybody. <laughs> I wasn't ready for you to just jump right in there. No one ever is. Well, you didn't tell me we were fucking recording. Anyway, Toku Talk. We're gonna, we, like I said, we got a lot of these. Um, this one was a fan suggestion, I believe, or was this a... This was a me suggestion. This is, okay, this was a you in the middle of the night suggestion. Yeah, I get these randomly in the middle of the night. So and he texts text us, because, you know... I, I have to... He have told to, me during recording. Not like I'm sleeping. I had, well, it's not like you pay attention to your phone when you're sleeping. Um, but yeah, here's the main thing that we're going to talk about today, as you can tell by the title. Human villains in Toku and what they bring to the various shows that they're in. So, if... You don't understand what we're talking about. We're talking about villains who are in Sentai or Kamen Rider that are not a, a suit. Are not in a rubber in a rubber suit. They're not a monster. They are a human. Like a fucking Zed from Tokyo or a Enter from uh, GoBusters. Or Doctor Man from Bioman or Biasama from Live Man. So this is obviously a thing that happened a lot more than the, like the older ones yeah, because the older they couldn't ones. afford a suit for that long. Or, you know, it just, it was, it was actually probably cheaper and it was, especially back then, the suits weren't good to be in for long amounts of time. That too. But it's just like, having a human villain. I think it's better. Yeah. And. Because you can do so much more from an acting perspective when you're not in a rubber suit being a voice actor. You can show your anger a lot easier. Your facial expressions can do a lot. Your body language can do a lot. So, I think. And that also, when you have that capability, it's easier to write a better story. It is. So, like, with Zed and his fascination with the light, I think it was a very interesting story that, I don't know, could have been done if, if they were just a rubber suit. It wouldn't have had the same impact. It wouldn't have worked. I'm happy that Lupad has brought the human villain back. Yeah. The, you talk about the ice guy? The ice guy. Yeah. Who was, uh, in, who was Kakaider in the hmm. Kakaider reboot. Oh, okay. But, yeah. He nuts. He batshit. He is really insane, but let's go back. Let's go back. Um... He cool though. Just to give he's like the interim, he's, he's, or not the interim, he's like the Bosco of this season. Let's go back and like you know give some background on this. Um, one of the first ones, of course, that I really remember seeing because we did watch the show Battle Fever when uh, I can't the heart. It was just, when you stabbed the heart. It's just when you end up having. If you don't understand the joke, you need to go watch about watch Battle Fever. Review. It's still one of my favorite jokes I've made to this day. Yeah, it's just because of the heck you're seeing a face. Yes, so it's identifiable. And, and that also means that it's a per- it, that is somebody who may at one point have been just like you or me. It's not a monster, and you can go, oh, that, they're just a monster. That's why they're bad. No, when it's a person, you kind of more think about what brought them here. Yeah. Now, I, I feel like a really good example of just doing this overall and doing this overall really well is Change Man. Because basically every single villain in that show was a human. Mm-hmm. Or human X. They were an alien who looked human. So we ended up having somebody like Guluk. And you can see just by his facial expressions and how he reacted to things, how power hungry he was. And a show that I think did that even better is Live Man. But Live Man does it. Li- Live Man, I think, did this the best because they were humans. Friends, why did you sell your soul to the devil? Yeah. They were people, but they were seduced and by the dark side imagine, and they became monsters. What's the matter? Speaking of Live Man, the scene where they find out Bia Sama's real plan to steal brains. When she's running away, when, when, she, yes. when that's she's that's running away, that would not have not had the exact, the same impact, even close, if she was in a rubber suit. Yeah. No. When Mazenda was running away mm-hmm. from him, you, the fear in her eyes, the desperation to get away from them. I, we still just love Lie Man, as we said on multiple parts of our yeah. list, but we, we remember that as an explicit moment. Because that happens that you're just like, you understand, you want her to get away. Like, you feel anxious mm-hmm. because you can see her. The stakes anxious. are high. Yeah. And another great moment from Live Man is they get, mo- all of the villains get monster forms, but there's, you can still see their human features. It's, they're humans, but they have been distorted by evil. Yeah. Whether it's in their mouth, Dr. Kemp has his, like, Fermi costume, but his face is still human. Not wrong. He's not wrong. But yeah, it's like, I, it, Kemp is just, Insane. And then yeah. uh, Go. Go with his, you know, he has like the freaky mouth with the sharp teeth. And, uh, and then he gets turned back into a human later on. And mm-hmm. he's just like, five minutes so good. <laughs> but, <laughs> but when you have a show like Zuoger, where they're all in suits, you can't really 
feel the same tension when or because it's just, here's the thing. I think you can. It just has to be done well. It, but it's all about execution. It is all about execution. Yeah, it I just, really is. It, I just feel like anything that it was done in a rubber suit would probably is amplified if you were able to see the body language more and the facial expressions. Facial expressions are the main thing here. Yeah, you know when the actors are allowed to act, uh, except for voice act, which I know are similar, but they are very two different things. Like there's a let, uh, let's talk about director for a quick second. We have a rival who is a person, you know, who's on the side of evil. Like, Die Ranger Jet, and I do this very, very well. Because, you know, we end up having everybody in uh, Bar Gray and Jet Man. Mm. And then we end up having uh, Rio and, uh, I can never remember. Who? I don't know if that's Gekker. Yeah, you're thinking of Gekker. Oh, that's also a good point. We're talking about that later, though. But, um... Good job. <laughs> we have Rio and uh, Dr. Kemp's. Dr. Kemp. Uh, his actor, when they end up having their whole thing it's so good to just see them, you know, has somebody that you can really identify with. Booba is a good choice, Booba. although we didn't see all of his face. It's it's very he good. He was human enough. Booba, yeah. Bosco. And we'll talk about Bosco and Enter. We'll, we'll get to them later. Yeah, we'll get to them a little we'll bit. Start, we'll start more early. Basically. But yeah, it's so good when you end up having something that's just insane like that. Because you end up seeing them be able to like, fight each other outside of suit as just people. It's very different from seeing them fight in their monster forms. Mm. I think one of the ones that did like did the monster forms really well, and this is just because of the way that the suit actors started to portray them, mm-hmm. is are the Neji Rangers, mm-hmm. Mega Ranger. But they're a special case. Now, let's go to Comrade for a quick second because we can do that. Was this is a uh, explicitly tied into Sentai, although this is where they do it more often. Yeah, uh, the Taros from Ditto. Yeah, they had so much body language. They had so much personality. And that's something that you can really substitute having a whole bunch of facial expressions and things like that. If you have a lot of just physical uh, physical movements and physical personality and things of that nature, mm-hmm. it makes you stand out that much more. It's just interesting. Though in their defense, it's a lot easier to do that with comedy yeah. than it is with drama. Because when you are angry, when you're in a dramatic scene, you're not really moving much unless you're angry. But when you're trying to be, you know, when you're doing slapstick, that's all you do is move. So, yeah, it depends on what type of tone you're going for. Kugi did this with uh, Inzek Vadeva. He had a, like, I guess... Human form. He had a human form, as you saw with them punching each other on top of that. But we didn't really know about a lot about the character, except that he was crazy. And even though he wasn't always in his human form, they portrayed it enough in his monster form that made it work. Yeah. It's interesting when we end up getting to moments like that. Where you could have them be human esque in both suit and out of suit. And that makes it just, it gives it a better dynamic, at least in my opinion. Um, some other examples Rio and Melee, now that you mentioned them earlier. We, I could not imagine watching Gekki Ranger and they were just in their monster suits the entire time. That's boring. It's boring, but the, because the connection those two had can really only be portrayed through facial expressions and the actors. And then you have characters like Bosco and Enter who do that whole, we have a human form and a monster form, but because we see the monster form a lot less than we see the human form, Mm. it's a lot more. And that little bit, especially Enter's case, after he starts going insane cray-cray at the end of the series, his human form becomes his monster form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, that's him. (laughs) <laughs> another, another thing you could draw a comparison with Kamen Rider Guy with Baron. Yeah. Yeah. Also a very good one in the uh, the Overlords because they were previously human. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's a whole separate thing. But Baron is a very good example of that. Kamen Rider doesn't do the end suit ones nearly as, all, um, as often. Uh, you know, you know, having everybody from W. Uh, everybody knows. Forza. Here's a... Here- Here's a good example. We have one going on right now with Build, because Stock is never really out of his suit. The entire That's what sh- that quotes. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's never really out of his suit the entire show. But when it, we reveal, when we put a face under that mask, when the mystery was re- revealed and it was you know the owner and then it was fucking Ryu, I think that's his name. Ryoga. Um, Ryoga. It it adds more to it because now you have a face under the mask. 
and that and now you have a story. And every time he when he was controlling owner Inc., owner was out of suit. Holy shit, he he ate the scene. He did. He was funny. He owned the room. He was hilarious. And he he just had so much presence. Because you knew everyone was scared of him. Like you can have presence inside of a suit, as we said, but there's sort of a disconnect. Because you can't see. Yeah. You can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John Cena. But yeah, it's it's so much more interesting to have a human face, face attached to a villain. That's why we love James oh. Rand and Live Man so much and Jetman and Die Ranger and just everything going forward that we've constantly mentioned over the years. I can say that because he's been here for more than two years now. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, any other final thoughts? I would like to see, as Jacob put it, I would like to see a rubber suit thing done well, executed well. So, because I haven't really seen it done well to the point where it's the same level as the ones like be a Sama, Bosco, and Enter, and Stock, and all these other great characters. I would just like to see it done well. Yeah, yeah I'm with him on this one. It gives you just a connection. And we need that connection. Even if it's just... And if you have to cheat and make it by giving the monster a human form that he goes into every now and then, every little bit helps. You might be proving my point, but every little bit helps. <laughs> but yeah, let us know what you think about this in the comments below. Oh yeah, this we would love to hear from you guys on this. Yep. And as always, please keep the Toku Talk suggestions coming. We are going to be doing a lot more of these. If you want to do, if you want us to do more top tens, keep those coming too. We are writing them down as much as we can. The community one will be up next. We've got things to do. Yeah. Fuck. But as always, like, subscribe, follow us on Patreon. Follow us on Twitter. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, Bye. everybody.